Hello and welcome back to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today we're going to talk about drum machines and using them with Reaper. So I've got a couple of inexpensive drum machines. This is a RX-17, the vintage drum machine. It does have MIDI. I also have the Korg Volca Sample, uh, which is a sampling drum machine. And that has MIDI. And the Behringer RD-6. So I'm going to try to keep it kind of general. So I'm using a variety of drum machines so that maybe some of the things that are unique to them also apply to the things that you own or are interested in buying. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so let's start with setting up the RX-17 to use with Reaper. The audio connections are audio out of the um, RX-17 that's going into Mixer, and then that's going into some channels on my audio interface. On the audio interface, I'm also going out from the MIDI jack to the in of the RX-17. So I'll just show you configuring that in Reaper. So we'll open up Preferences, go to the MIDI out page, find the audio interface or um, keyboard controller or MIDI interface that you have. So Audio Fuse is mine, and I will enable MIDI out, and I will send clock to it as well. If you double click here, there, there's some more options here, but in general, you don't really need to do any of these things. They should work just by doing this. So we'll set up a track so that we can hear this. So I will record enable, monitor enable, and then select the correct input, which is this one here. And so now if I tap on a pad, that's coming through. It's not a great sounding drum machine. I'm not saying go and buy this one or anything like that. If you do happen to like the sounds or you think they're okay, I actually did make a, a, a sample pack of this. Um, it's, a, it's a playable instrument using Decent Sampler. I'll have a link to that. It's on my website. Free download. Enjoy. Yeah, so we've got a track here for hearing it. Let's we'll just call it RX-17 Audio. And so because we're sending MIDI clock to this, we can actually trigger the patterns on this. So this has some built-in patterns. I'll just play one here. You know, sort of a metal beat. Um, and if we go to MIDI, it's currently set to internal clock, MIDI. Yes. And so now it's sync MIDI. And now if I'm on the pattern page here, and uh, let's go back to the first pattern here. So select pattern one, and um, now if I press play in Reaper, it's playing from the RX-17, the internal pattern, and it's synced to the tempo of Reaper. Okay, I just moved around my toolbars uh, so that you can see the, the tempo here. So if I just tap in, it's now at 115, and it's gonna play back a bit slower. Let me just change this to what's, Type 80. Just having connected and sending clock from the MIDI devices page will make this work when it's on MIDI clock. And the other devices should be the same when you're in a, a song mode. So if we don't want that to trigger a, a pattern, we just have to load a pattern that is not already in use. So pattern eight has nothing written to it. So I can press play and, and nothing happens. But the next thing we can do with this is to send it MIDI information. And so to do this, we need a new track and we'll set this up so that in the routing window, we're sending MIDI hardware output to the audio fuse, which is my audio interface. We can send on original channels, but you can also force it to a specific channel here. So I'll just do channel one. I know that this is set to channel one. And uh, if you're chaining multiple devices together using the through port, and the imports on the devices, you would choose different MIDI channels on each device. And you would choose these other channels if you have your MIDI devices in a chain using the in and through ports on them and uh, setting them to specific channels. So I could have my RX-17 on channel one, my Volca sample on channel two, and my RD-6 on channel three. Notes that I send to the RX-17 won't trigger the Volca sample, et cetera. So in this case, sending to channel one. Uh, we'll call this RX-17 MIDI. And we don't have to really do anything else on this. It's not an audio track or anything, but let's put in a MIDI pattern here. And so if I 
play a C2 here, we can see that as I click, that's triggering the RX-17. So let's go to uh, diamonds mode, and we're on a 16th note grid. So let's just quickly put in a pattern. And now going back to the start and playing. That's at 80 beats per minute. We'll change that to 120. All your MIDI devices should essentially work that way. Um, sending MIDI clock to trigger patterns if you're on a pattern mode and triggering notes if you're only sending notes. Uh, let's switch to the Volca sample, which is a little bit different. And I now have the Korg Volca sample 2 hooked up. I've got power, MIDI, and uh, audio out. To make this work, we're going to set this to a single channel mode. It has a multi-MIDI channel mode and a single channel MIDI mode. I think just for the example, we'll, we'll do the single channel MIDI function and not because I couldn't figure out the multi-channel one. But, so we're going to hold down function and then turn on. And now it's in global uh, global mode. If we tap on this one, if it says NULT or MULT, that's multi-channel mode. And now we're on channel 10. You can change the channel number here. So let's just do channel 10. No real reason, just because. And we'll save that. And now it's reloaded. And now when we send... MIDI from Reaper on channel 10, that will arrive on the vocal sample. So like before, we'll, we'll just set up this MIDI hardware output, same device, and we can choose to send to original channels. So whatever channel you're sending from the MIDI editor itself. We can also choose a different one. So we can choose channel 10 here, and then whatever is in the MIDI editor will just automatically be sent out on channel 10. So let's make a new MIDI pattern. And just in case you didn't know, you can set the MIDI channel in the bottom right corner of the MIDI editor as well. So any notes you enter, uh, let's say for channel two, we'll send out channel two. Since we're transforming that MIDI channel in the send, the hardware send out, we don't actually need to do that. So we'll just find, okay, I'll just unmute this, this kick. Actually, I don't seem to have a a hi hat. Uh, that'll work. So we've basically set up the vocal sample the same way that the RX-17 was set up. Going back to the Reaper preferences, I actually turned off the MIDI clock because that was triggering patterns. So what you would have to do to, to do this sort of mode is either turn off MIDI clock or switch again, uh, as I showed on the RX-17, just switch to an empty pattern. If this is on and I just press play, it's triggering a, a built-in pattern. I can go to a different song. And I can go to another one. And I can load uh, two songs like that. And so it's playing uh, two different patterns in a row. We actually didn't talk about recording in this at all. So let's just hit record here. Okay. So in terms of like latency and things like that, it's, this one's not too bad. The ARC-17 was much worse for like this, this offset at the beginning, but this one seems to trigger a little bit faster. So you can actually calculate that difference. So if you turn snapping off, you can make a time selection until the note kind of gets triggered. Okay, there's my selection bar. I've just set this to samples. I can see that this is 62 samples that I've selected. I don't think it's worth 
worrying about that sort of latency. Yeah, it's like 60 to 100 samples late. And that sort of latency would probably only make a difference if you had like two of these playing the exact same samples at the same time. Then you would notice the phase issue, but I don't think that's... It, it's not significantly off. Uh, it's not thousands of samples off. It's not hundreds of samples off. It's just about 100. If you wanted it to be extremely accurate, you can um, go into the routing window here for the track, and you can use this start, uh, media playback offset, set this to samples, and you can put like minus 60 in here, and then that would uh, sync up with your click a little bit better. But I would only use this if it's significantly out of time. All right, for the last example, I've got the Behringer RD6. This is connected in essentially the same way uh, as the last time, but we're actually using the through port or the out port of the RD6, and that's going into the Volca sample. So we're going to use two different sampler, or one drum machine, one sampler, two drum machines, whatever you want to say, at the same time. Um, so when this one gets the main MIDI signal on the MIDI port, uh, it also transfers clock and any notes to the second device. So you can actually chain multiple devices if there's an input and a through port. The, uh, the Volca sample only has a MIDI in, so that has to be last in the chain. Or it needs its own MIDI interface. So coming back to Reaper, because both of these devices' audio connections are coming through the same device, I've just renamed this track to Mixer Audio. It's getting the same source. I don't have a way of really isolating them. I could do like a left channel, right channel thing, but just for the purpose of this demonstration, I don't think it matters. On the RD6, you press and hold these two buttons here. That will go to your uh, sync and clock settings here. So this, and then press MIDI, and now it's going to be listening for a MIDI clock signal. Pressing start will not play the pattern. Um, when it's on MIDI mode. And also the Volca sample is not starting yet. So the Volca sample track is still set to ch send on channel 10. And now the RD6 MIDI track will send on channel one. Let's just see what happens if I press play. I can see the lights moving on the Volca sample. I have this set as a, on a pattern that is blank and the RD6 has a pattern loaded, I can go to a blank pattern, but actually it, I could set the mode to uh, trigger internally. Now we'll play if I press play, but if I press play in Reaper, it's actually not. But the Volca sample is getting the clock and it's, and it's running. So you can kind of choose which one is going to play a, a pre-written pattern, which one is only sort of waiting for notes uh, or both. Um, it's pretty flexible in that way. I'm just going to clear this pattern. All right, so now it's a fully empty pattern, and we can just send MIDI notes from Reaper. Okay, so I can just uh, put in some MIDI here. So it's not velocity sensitive, but I do have control over various things in real time. A big benefit of having the hardware drum machine is that you can you can really have complete control. And I also have control on my mixer. I can add reverb. So you can always use a combination of things in Reaper, things in the hardware, process things in real time, record the entire output. There's lots of flexibility in what you can do with drum machines. So in general, the connections are always the same. 
audio out of your drum machine to your audio interface, MIDI out of your audio interface or MIDI interface into the drum machine. And then you got to figure out things like, do you want it to sync and play patterns? Do you want it just to trigger notes? Do you want to program on the internal sequencer and then play it back when you play your Reaper project? Do you want hands-on control and mix in real time? All these sorts of things need to be figured out by you, but the actual connections and things are generally pretty simple. I find it to be a lot more fun than uh, just programming with MIDI. So that's it. Hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, I, I think it's a lot of fun to play around with hardware drum machines. These are all cheap ones, but uh, I well, I find them fun and useful. Uh, hopefully this video has been fun and useful and interesting for you. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blogs through Patreon. Visit reaper.blog for more tutorials.